This morning it was just a stock. Now it is proof that the laws of gravity have been temporarily suspended on Wall Street. We're talking about Podstock Tilray and its remarkable run since its IPO just in July. Let's get to Aditi Roy in San Francisco for all the details. Hey, Aditi. Hey there, Melissa. Boy, what a wild day for anyone trading Tilray stock. The stock closing up 38% today, its best day since going public. But the real story is what happened leading up to the close. Tilray shares opening up at 233, up 51 percent and then steadily climbed an hour before the close shares soared as high as 94 percent or up 300 bucks only to wipe out all of those huge gains and more in less than an hour the low for shares was 151.40 down 2.3 percent on the session it rebounded in the last 30 minutes closing up 38 percent the swings were so volatile the stock was halted five times. Despite those ups and downs, Tilray is the best performing IPO in about two and a half years. The stock has gained 1,200 percent since its IPO. As of today's market close, the stock is bigger than nearly half of the components of the S&P 500. But how is it valued against its peers? We'll just take a look at the price to sales ratio of Tilray versus its competitors. Tilray's value on sales far exceeding that of companies like Canopy Growth, Aurora, even Kronos. Among the Tilray investors who are hitting the jackpot, Peter Thiel. Thiel's venture fund, Founders Fund, is a big investor in pot-focused private equity fund Privateer Holdings. It owns 76% of Tilray's stock. Thiel has been a supporter of the cannabis industry back in 2016. He donated to the ballot measure, that initiative that legalized marijuana for recreational use in California. Melissa? Certainly a jackpot. surprises. Yeah, a jackpot for yeah. Peter Deal. Aditi, thanks. Aditi Roy in San Francisco. Our Tim Seymour, of course, is all in on this space. Uh, but Tim, we should note, is also on three advisory boards for cannabis stocks. Uh, and for all of Tim's disclosures, you can always go to fast.cnbc.com for all of them. In the meantime, what's your take on the move? Pretty crazy move today. I'm speechless. I, this is, you know, for someone that's seen a lot of liquidity rushes in other asset classes, this is extraordinary. And I do think, as great as the fundamental news was, and that included an FDA announcement yesterday that they they could import medical cannabis, do research at UCSD uh, the day before Coke, talking about they're looking at this uh, more from a, you know, a, a CBD wellness perspective. Bottom line, this is a squeeze of epic proportions. And in fact, this is all capital markets dynamics. If you look at actually Tilray vis-a-vis Kronos, uh, and, and, and Canopy, the two other names that are traded over here, those stocks are effectively sideways over the last month. You can't tell me that Tilray's strategic advantage is that much better. And yes, it does. It trades, you know, roughly 10 times of Afria, which is another one of the big Canadian, you know, big boys. So uh, the valuation makes zero sense. I actually think that they should unlock some more stock from Privateer. I think there should be more of a float out there right now. And I think actually that would relieve a lot of the volatility here because this is a short squeeze. And I think through Friday's expiration, it's going to be a wild ride. There's some guys that are very short this stock, and I would stay out of the way. I mean, it's crazy to think that Peter Thiel owns 76 percent of the shares out there in Tilray. I mean, talk about a tight float, right? You it's think? extremely tight. <laughs> there's no stock out and there. And when there's right. a 20 something percent shortage, to, to, Tim's, right. yeah. to Tim's point, you see what happens. But it's also, and we've talked about this, Tim has as well, there's a scarcity issue in terms of the amount of pro, uh, pro, publicly traded stocks that people have the availability to get into in a space that everybody thinks, or a lot of people think, will be effectively the next Internet. When more stocks become public, I don't think you're going to see dynamic moves like this in, in the near future. Especially more stocks coming public here in the United States. I mean, there's also, right, another level Tons of, deal of scarcity. Coming. Uh, just because there are so few stocks listed here. They're all yeah. listed in Canada. For the and when you look part. at the volume today, how about the fact that it was nearly oh. four times normal? I mean, 30-plus million shares today when it's been right. trading about 8 million shares a day. I mean, the short squeeze is, is definitely in play. And, and, and the borrow, if any of us sitting on the desk talk about it all the time, but the borrow on this name is absolutely outrageous. So it means that the options price very odd, too, Mel. Yeah. Not to get complicated, but very, very Well, I would just bet one other point. You know, that move into 3 o'clock when it went from yeah. basically 240 to 3 o'clock, you know, day traders with the borrow, and, the t and, and everything as tight as it is, you know, day traders are probably shorting it without a borrow, and then at some point they have to make a decision, and that could have been the thing That's that right. caused yeah. that I'm short that. squeeze, and then you start having these halts, you know, and I mean, it was perfectly mayhem for a $20 billion market cap company. Yep. All right. Our next guest was on this show just one week ago, called the surge in pot stocks. This is either the opportunity or the issue. 
basically as an aggregate, pot stocks all peaked in January with the market and have yet to recover back to those levels. But based on, again, this recent heavy volume accumulation as we approach the former high, my thinking here is that we're going to now exceed the high and that you've got quite a good setup for uh, a big breakout. I, I like the theme, but again, you can pick the wrong one. One way to do it is to stick with an aggregate like this. Chartmaster was spot on. The marijuana ETF has now indeed exceeded its prior January high. Since its call on September 10th, the ETF is up nearly 4%. Chartmaster Carter Worth of Cornerstone Macro back at the plasma with a warning. And Carter, have, to, have you ever seen anything like this? Well, it's extraordinary, right? I mean, it's, it's the volatility, it's the lack of float, and it's the sheer intraday range. I'm going to talk about that at the end. But today's story is really not about pot stocks, really. It is about this one particular stock. And so let's drill down on that. What we know is uh, the issue of liquidity. There are 76.5 million shares outstanding, and yet 58 of them are held by uh, one entity. Um, the float is only 10. Average day volume is 11, and we saw today 34 million shares traded. Effectively, every share that's available to be traded, traded three times, if you could look at it that way. But let's go on to the, um, let's go on to the next slide. And... Uh, I want to look at the intraday action. So what this is, is this is a 60 minute bar chart. So every bar is an hour. And what we know is that after basically coming out of the IPO, if we look at the next chart, you'll see that it was up 100% right out of the gate. The next chart will show us that it was gave back about 36%. And you can see that here, right? So we have a huge give back after this huge gain and basically a dead asset. And then, of course, the launch. So the next setup you'll see here is that we move along the line, and this is today's action, and this is what's important. We basically have perfectly over and over and over walked this line until today's blow-off parabolic move. So from here, next chart, what you'll see is that we went through the top and then close the gap. So there was actually a little gap. It was the open, and then we collapsed. And so now the issue is, does that high set the high for a long time? I think so, yes. Uh, one more chart, and then I want to make a point about charting overall. So if we could clear this. I think my clear button doesn't say, well, maybe it's here. I'm sorry. I think I've been driving the wrong way here. Okay, now look. This is what's important. Bar charts. If ever you don't see a bar chart on this screen, it's because I haven't had time to send in the right chart. But any published report you ever look at, if you use a line chart, you are not looking at the facts. The fact that the stock had a low of 150 and a high of 300, where you open, where you close is what matters. And the fact is it had a very poor close. Now, end with this. If you have a line chart and you just woke up because you got off a plane, a 13-hour trip, from around the world, you'd say, oh, Tilray, close at 214, up 38%. That's not the story. Intraday charts are very important. If ever you're charting, use a high-low close chart, not a line chart. That tells us nothing. Plenty of people lost millions today, and others made millions. Carter has got to come over to the Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, well, without that kind of analysis? Stephanie will bring the chair in. Deep, Even without bars Even with or whatever. Stephanie. Bars give us a little <laughs> bit of talks, a little bit about charts. Oh, we got the bars bit. in. Um, Tilray specifically, what's the downside right now? Well, so the important thing is, is that what a blow-off looks like, where you have unrelenting appreciation, a lot of illiquidity, and then a double, effectively, and then a collapse. The halting alone tells you that that is a spasmodic sort of flare-up that won't end well. So I think the highs of today, 300, will stand for a long time. Is technical analysis more difficult when you have such a small float? I mean, when you have... 76% uh, of the shares held by somebody who is long. Right. Uh, you, and you, you only think, have... Right? And yet you right. saw the trend line there. It goes right along the trend line, mm -hmm. gets extended, and then falls back. And remember, uh, a lot of charting is done in the biggest assets in the world, currencies, or the smallest microcap stocks. It doesn't matter. You know? Yeah. Carter, what, is it, what do those gaps mean? Are the, like, are the, the halting gaps and all that so, sort of stuff? Does that make it really hard to kind of look at that intraday action? Well, the gap is what's so important is that you had that opening gap. Yeah. So think about what the experience could have been. There are people who might have been short going into it, and then it gapped up and they covered. Right? They said, I can't take it. And then maybe they said, well, maybe I'll get long. This is, this is just going to never stop. And flipped it around, got long, only to watch the thing crash. There are people who made money three times, in and out perfectly, and there are people who also lost all of their fingers. 
uh, today. It's, it's, it's deadly stuff, almost untradeable.